Hi, I'm Patrick. And I'm Liv. And this is the Maki Vlog. It seems like we were just here, or actually at Disneyland, when there was a big Ford and Tesla announcement. We talked all about that. It was big news at the time. Well, just today, GM made a very similar announcement. So we're going to talk about that, talk about CCS, talk about Max. We're going to talk about all that good stuff. So let's go. We're gonna have to look back at that video in Disneyland. It was a bit of a whirlwind, but I'm pretty sure that I said GM was my vote for who I thought, or more wishful perhaps, was that would jump on board with Tesla and incorporate the NACS, NACS charging standard. Do we say NAX or do we say NACS? I think some people are saying NAX. I like NACS. NACS, North American Charging Standard, but yeah. I think you did say GM. I'm not even sure who I said because it was such a whirlwind at Winner. the time. <laughs> Yeah, it's super awesome. Uh, in the same way that Jim Farley and Elon Musk got on Twitter spaces, Jim Farley and Mary Barra did that today. Grand announcement. So we can only assume that the next time there's an announcement like this, it's going to be on Twitter spaces. It's actually a pretty great idea for like promoting the whole thing. And if you didn't uh, catch it, um, and I'm sure it's all over the news now, but it's pretty much the same thing that Ford announced. They said that... Um, Starting in 2024, there will be an adapter so that if you have a GM vehicle, Ford announced this a couple of weeks ago, but if you have a GM or Ford in 2024, you'll be able to use an adapter to uh, charge at a supercharger. They've had adapters before where you could use a Tesla destination charger. This allows access to the supercharger network and it's gonna be integrated uh, seamlessly. They're getting access to the API and payment system. So you should be able to have a fairly seamless uh, transaction charging session. And then in 2025, Ford said this, and now GM's saying this, they will start putting the NACS, the Max port, on their vehicles. And uh, so that's very exciting. That was the announcement today, and Liv was excited. We've been looking at the Chevy Bolt, which of course is gonna be discontinued. Well, I mean, I'll say I was excited and I wasn't excited. If you followed our Chevy Bolt progress, we had a really hard time getting any of the dealerships out here to agree to MSRP. So we actually, just like maybe two weeks ago, had an opportunity where someone was like, well, we might have a Bolt. And we were like, ah, no, when, cause well, there's more, we'll explain. But so we could have had an opportunity to have a vehicle that now would have access to 12,000 more chargers, but we don't. And I feel like bolts now are going to be like, oh, even more gold than they were. Well, yeah, it was. Well, and, you know, there's issues with that because the bolt doesn't charge that fast. So charging sure. a bolt at a supercharger might Ooh. not be the best thing. Uh, but it does mean, you know, there's a little bit more uh, lifespan and flexibility. And one of the things like... With the Bolt, it's like, it'd be nice to have some some options like that. But I think um, for for me, what I'm really excited is the Equinox and Blazer that are coming out, specifically the Equinox. Like, a lot of people are saying that's somewhat the equivalent of the uh, the Bolt, because it's gonna supposedly lower costs, um, not the you know, 50, $60,000 EV that we've been seeing. So uh, the Equinox will be their they're more budget EV, and the fact that now you'll have more charging options is, is pretty exciting. When Ford made the announcement, a lot of people were saying, and, and you know, in my mind I was thinking as well, it was like, um, it, it makes it maybe a bit more appealing. Maybe this makes the Equinox a bit more appealing for people. Yeah, and to be totally honest, I've been chomping at the bit to reserve an Equinox for, I mean, how long has it been since they announced them? Eight months? I don't know. It's been a while. A long time. Yeah, and the reservations have not been opened. Uh, it feels crazy because so many other things have sort of come out of the woodwork or uh, appeared since then. So uh, I would love to reserve an Equinox. That's exactly what we're looking for as a second EV, something that would be great for me. Um, more affordable is said to be within $30,000 and uh, for, like okay charging, good range. It could be perfect. Um, but something that was recently announced that I actually just reserved yesterday is the Volvo EX30. And I'm very, very excited about that. So now it kind of like, it, it, it changes. It gives you something to think about. Yeah. And this is all related because it's sort of like, uh, you know, first of all, is this adapter going to be, is it going to make it so that um, you can get an adapter from Tesla, Ford, or GM and then use it on a Volvo? 
because that could be really cool. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you have to use the app. Um, you won't be able to use plug-in charge or something like that. But will we be able to use that adapter on other vehicles? But then it also goes into, um, and no, no one has said, by the way, that we, we that's speculation, maybe, hopefully. Um, but then it's also like, who's going to be next? And we, you know, Liv said maybe GM. I thought Hyundai might be one of the next I, ones. Or I, like Rivian and Lucid, I think, are no-brainers. They sort of have to do it, I think. Um, but they're smaller. They're startups. But as far as the like legacy manufacturers, I think Hyundai, which would be Genesis, Kia, and Hyundai. Um, it would be awesome. And, and of course, Stellantis could be one. They don't really have a lot going on in North America right now. They've talked about prototypes. They have stuff like the Chrysler Airflow, which now may be redesigned as well um, and renamed even. So for them, they could switch because they don't actually have anything in production right now for North America. That would make it easy for them. Uh, the European manufacturers, specifically, you know, BMW, uh, Audi, whatever. Of course, you know, a lot of them come under, under the VW group, which owns Electrify America. So uh, it might be some resistance to switching. I don't know if we're going to see a lot from the, the the German manufacturers until it's like they have no other choice. And um, after the Ford announcement was made, I believe the next day or two, uh, Electrify America did come out with a statement and just said, CCS is the standard, that's what it is right now. But they strive to, you know, like meet customer demands and, you know, typical corporate speak, which they sort of had to say, and that they would monitor the market and they may make changes down the road. Nothing definitive, nothing concrete, which I wouldn't expect them to do, you know, something so fast. I do expect ChargePoint, EVgo, Electrify America uh, will start including NACS cables at some point. Uh, EVgo already has that, that option uh, on some of their chargers. I think Electrify America and ChargePoint are going to have to do that at some point. So, uh, Shall I hold the camera? For yeah, you can hold the camera for <laughs> a second. So but, I, this Sorry. We no, I was to... just saying that. So I and, and I, I just wanted to like transition there because like they're going to start, you know, however they do it, like maybe it'll be like two stations have CCS and then one station has the NAX cable. However, they're going to do it. Um, it's going to be great to, to see like, you know, options out there for people. And, you know, we'll have Tesla superchargers. They're only going to do NAX. So it'll be interesting. Actually, the of course, they have the Magic Dock, mm -hmm. um, but I think a Magic Dock is dead now. I don't think they'll do any more Magic Docks. They have 12 stations now. I don't think they're going to expand that. It just makes me so curious. Like, I want to know what was going on on the back end, because, like, what happened since Magic Dock was initiated that made this change occur? Like, were all the major automakers getting together with, with Tesla and Elon Musk, and were they all strategizing for this to happen now? And, I mean... VW, Electrify America, the pressure is on. Yeah. This, is, this is like the most interesting uh, drama TV show. What's it called? A soap. It's the yeah. best soap opera. <laughs> well, and it, you know, and it goes back to, um, you know, when you have competition, hopefully the competition all gets better. So right now, even though you could say like Tesla and uh, Tesla superchargers and EA are competing, they really weren't for the most part because... If we pulled into a town like Green River, uh, Utah, which we've done numerous times, we, we could only pick EA. And Teslas could only pick superchargers unless they bought the adapter because you can, you can actually uh, buy a CCS adapter for Teslas. But most people don't have that. So it was like there wasn't really competition. But now, like if I pull into Green River and I have a choice between Electrify America and the supercharger, it, you know, if they're the same price, um, I would probably go with the supercharger. Unless Green River Coffee Company is open, because then I would go in there and have a coffee and say hi to Amy. Hi to, hi to Amy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so there, there are factors like that. Hopefully this type of competition means that, that the EA will get better. Now, of course, um, you know, EA as it stands, even if they put the NACs, you know, like say it's 2025 and they started putting some NACs, connectors, uh, cables on their cars, uh, on, on their chargers, 
and we have a Ford EV that has the NAX connector or GM, and we plug into Electrify America, well, there's still other things that can create issues that Tesla superchargers don't necessarily have to deal with. They have the, the card reader, the tap and pay, they have screens so that you can make those type of transactions and see what it's doing. And all of those are sort of failure points. And just because they switched the cable and they're connecting to a car that has an axe port doesn't mean that all of a sudden those other problems aren't going to uh, go away. And of course, you know, where are they getting their cables? Because like one of the issues that Electrify America has had quite extensively is that the the actual handle, the sensor in the the handle goes bad and then the charger itself derates and charges at a really slow speed. So um, if they buy you know cheap connectors that are the NAC standard, then there's they may still have that that type of issue with maintenance and, and whatever. And of course that's the other issue is like uh, one of the great things about the Tesla supercharger network is they're they're on it. Like they get things resolved quickly. So um, if you see a supercharger down, generally it's like fixed within a couple of days. I don't know how they do it. You know, part of it is the simplicity. There's not screens, there's not whatever, you know, that you have to deal with. And they, they're, they have their version two and their version threes, but they're all made by Tesla. And EA has like four major uh, vendors that they've been using. They're transitioning to some new uh, chargers but they still have to have different parts and different capabilities and different training to maintain those different charging stations. And this applies to ChargePoint and uh, EVgo stations and stuff like that. Like if you have variety of stuff, it can be harder to get it maintained. And ChargePoint does some things I don't like. Like they basically sell the charger and then don't maintain it because it's up to the person that bought it. Um, and then you have people that shouldn't be buying chargers because they don't think about the maintenance part. It's funny because you're reminding me, we went to Electrify Expo in Long Beach a couple weeks ago, and they did this really cool thing where they had like interactive uh, screens and then you could answer questions on your phone. So like the one question was, who should be responsible for charger installs and charger maintenance? And one of the answers was, whoever wants to. And that one, I'm pretty sure won, and if not, it was like fluctuating for the top. But I mean, that's kind of the situation now. A lot is, you know, those chargers bolt outside of Kohl's. I think they're the ones that do Kohl's or um, Electrify America or ChargePoint, whoever, whoever's going to maintain that. And it's going to be really interesting to see what happens when you have uh, the one organism, Tesla, controlling the entire system. Um, like when you go into a chain restaurant, and you know exactly yeah. what you're getting. I, I don't think I'd mind. I, I don't think I'd mind a little more predictability in charging. Yeah, well, and, and that reminds me of, to, you know, one of the things we should talk about are like, what do we know and, um, about all of this stuff that's happening? Uh, we don't know, is Tesla going to just uh, publish the standard and then anybody can make their cables and connectors? Or are they gonna say, you have to buy them through us? Um, there's pros and cons to either way. I would like, it to be like an open standard so multiple people you know vendors can can be competitive and whoever comes up with the best product is the one that gets adapted the most um, but then you have to always worry is it up to the, the the same quality that we're seeing now it doesn't seem like a tesla thing to do so i imagine they would keep it closed yeah and they they are generally doing uh closed um stuff for the most part they say open source or whatever but like their parts or only Tesla parts. You don't get like a Napa uh, part. Got a loud vehicle. I bet no one can hear it. I know. The mics are good. Um, but if Tesla controls all of it, then uh, I don't want there to be issues where, you know, like vendors can't just easily order and get them and control. Um, they don't get the, to choke the supply chain. Yeah, like I, I mean, it, you know, and it would make sense. Like if Tesla's controlling or you know, the only one where you can get cables and it's like, well, we can provide it to Tesla um, or, and, and everybody else, but now we're, there's a part shortage, you would think they would you know, make Tesla the priority. One of the things that Elon Musk said today in the Twitter space with GM was he said that you know, it is their goal to make everybody on, the, on a level playing field. And, and he said something hmm. to that effect with uh, Jim Farley as well, which is very encouraging because um, 
there have been thoughts of like, they're gonna make it more difficult to charge if you have a uh, GM or Ford or whatever. Uh, that would not be good. And I, I almost expect that we'll have to pay a little bit more. It's sort of like if we're a member of EA, we get a discount. If we're a non-member, we pay more. I sort of would expect the same thing. Like if we have to pay an extra nickel per kilowatt hour, or we have to pay an extra, you know, five bucks a month to be a member of the, the Tesla supercharger network. That seems reasonable to me. I mean, Tesla's building out the network. And if you buy a Tesla car, that's your membership fee. Um, and if you buy a Ford, you have to pay a membership fee. A reasonable fee would be nice. Not reasonable. that I'm asking for that, no. but I would understand that. I would like for it to be completely uh, level. But the, but there are, um, it, it does seem like they are gonna work so that it's integrated into like the GM and the Ford uh, app. It looks like at least with Ford, you'll be able to do plug and charge. Uh, the, the technical capabilities are there uh, and from what Tesla has said and the, you know, that they're gonna work with the standard what's been published in the, the NAX port uh, documentation. It supports ISO 15118, which is plug and charge. So that should work. Um, another question has been about the vehicle to grid. Uh, in the NAX documentation, it says that it is compatible with vehicle to X, V to X which would include vehicle to grid, but there's no specifications on that. So that's stuff that I'm sure has to be worked out. But um, the idea that they said it's compatible is, is good news. Um, there's still some other questions like, will the charge port location change on cars? Uh, I think maybe there could be some better standardization for that. Like we, we just got this, uh, and I'll swing around here real quick. Uh, we're gonna be reviewing this Lexus uh, RZ 450E and I noticed on the dash it shows like a you know like on um, gas cars it has like the little uh, gas pump with an arrow pointing to which side the uh, the tank is on uh, it has that so it, it tells me That's like cute. I didn't know that. yeah it's, it's, it's sort of neat but it's also like it's a uh, uh, throwback from ice so I think they could have come up with a better symbol for it is all I was saying. Oh, yeah, like a little lightning, but maybe it, animating, filling up. It's basically, <laughs> and I'll, actually, I'll just walk over here real quick just to show you guys. And it, It's the, the port location is the, the same as on the Mach-E. It's basically right behind the driver uh, front wheel. On the Nissan Leaf, we'll show you this one. Of course, this is Chatamo, so this is sort of like a good example. It's right behind the logo. It's sort of like a good example of like um, what can happen if you don't have adapters. Ah, yeah. It's because um, this car right now has a problem with the level two and level one charging that doesn't work. So we can only use Chatamo. Uh, there's some Chatamo stations around here, but they only have one uh, Chatamo cable. And by the way, more info about this car is coming tomorrow, probably. Or so. soon, yeah. Or soon, Depends shortly. on which video we release. <laughs> but um, it, it, it makes it that it can be very difficult when you are seeing more and more CCS, NAX, whatever. And then there's like always the one uh, Chatamo plug. You know, they need an adapter for Chatamo to support this stuff as well. Will anybody do that? Will Nissan step up? There's a lot of Leafs out there that could, that could use that. A lot of Leafs that need love. Leaves. <laughs> Leaves. <laughs> <laughs> so what else? Um, there... I'm so. Do we want to touch on anything that people have asked us about in our previous video? Yeah, uh, I'm trying to think of some of the questions. Of course. Oh, one thing uh, that there was a question about, like in 2025, when Ford decides to switch over to NAX, will it be just NAX or will it be NAX and CCS? And Ford has not closed the door on the possibility of doing dual ports. And I think on the F-150 Lightning right now, there's a CCS port on the left. It could make a lot of sense to put a NAX port on the right side and make it a dual port system. If not um, standard, at least as an option. Uh, but like I said, Ford has not closed the door on that. They, uh, on Twitter, basically said more to come later. So who knows? Um, I'm really excited. Um, we know that some people are not super thrilled about this because of Elon Musk. And I'll announce that I'm not the hugest fan of Elon Musk. Um, but I want 
EVs to be accessible to everyone. So whatever it is, if we are all in on the same charging system and everyone has access, uh, and there's access for all and it's non-proprietary, yeah. then I'm happy about that progress. So don't know how stuff's going to roll out. And uh, I'm hopeful that it rolls out in a, a way that increases access and accessibility for people. And uh, so we're excited. I, I'm excited about that part. And GM jumping on the bandwagon. Um, what do they call it? Everyone in? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Who's next? I, it's it's exciting because uh, this is a big step for uh, more accessibility for everyone for non-proprietary charging. And we can't say everyone because uh, somebody brought up a very good issue, and I started researching it a little bit. Uh, we we a lot of times we we'll look at accessibility issues at charging stations for physical disabilities because Liv uh, sometimes is in a wheelchair and chargers are not always accessible. But somebody uh, brought up to me some very good points about um, people that, you know, y you want to sort of discredit the fact that like, well, everybody has a cell phone, uh, which is not always the case. And everybody has a bank account, which is not always the case, or a credit card. There are a lot of people that have, you know, gas vehicles and they go and they sort of barely get by and they're paying for gas like five dollars at a time if ten dollars at a time or even less or whatever how is that going to work out and right now like some of the the standards for uh, nevi just requires that there's a credit card reader but um that can be problematic for people that are only using cash and i i figured like uh, and the numbers what like maybe 0.5%, but uh, some communities, uh, it's up over 5% of the, the community is bankless. They don't have a, a bank account, they don't have a credit card. How is that gonna be handled in the future? Um, these, are, these are more in-depth in the weeds questions, but they are actually things that we need to think about now. The same thing is with the physical accessibility of these stations, when they put curbs and bollards and things like that around the stations, it sounds like a good idea maybe at the time, but you know, if we're gonna do away with gas stations where you have attendants that can come out and help somebody with a physical disability, if you notice there's a, often a button where you can press, how will that work in the future if like charging stations aren't being staffed? So, um, and, and, and by the way, on that note, there's a company, I won't mention their name because we're, they're sort of in pre-release stage, but they are looking at doing like a full service type charging station out here in Southern California. And we're gonna to try to investigate that and get involved in their grand opening, not involved, but cover it. I totally forgot about them. That's really exciting. Yeah, and that's a great point. Thank you to whoever brought that up to you about the accessibility. That's so important. And I so appreciate learning about everyone's opinions and experiences because I can only know my own, you know? so. Um, it makes me think, uh, I'm a patron of Transport Evolved, they're a fantastic YouTube channel, and they shared on their patron-only video today that they're working on a really cool video on diversity and uh, inclusion uh, in the location of charging stations. So this very much ties into what you're talking about because um, it can be exclusive, and th this whole thing is exclusive. EVs are, are more expensive, but hopefully this is changing. <laughs> yeah, that's something I, I was just on a, a panel the other night and brought up the fact that, you know, we do a lot and there's a lot of work to make uh, EVs uh, cheaper and more obtainable by implementing tax credits. But even if you make a, an EV, uh, like the, the Model 3 right now, you can get some fantastic deals on the Model 3 with the tax credits in certain states on top of the federal tax credit. So it's like, it's great, now you have a cheap EV, but where are you gonna charge it if you don't own your home? And I think it's around 60 some percent of people actually own a home. Everybody else is either renting a home or in an apartment, condo, or, or whatever. So then um, where do you charge? And we, we need public infrastructure. And unfortunately, a lot of times they're putting, you know, charging like at the mall or something like that that's in the suburbs, not in downtown urban areas. So, you know, lots of things to think about. Um, this this new announcement from GM is uh, fantastic news. Joining Ford uh, and Tesla, and you know, we we do need to give like a lot of props to Tesla for opening up their network. 
Uh, I've gotten into a lot of debates with people over the past couple of years owning our mach -E, and it was like, Tesla doesn't know it, owe anybody anything. And I'm like, no, they, they absolutely, there's no requirement for Tesla to open up their network, but their mission is to support sustainable green energy and transportation. And if that's their mission, I think it is in the best interest to open this stuff up. And they did. So kudos to them. They didn't, they were under no obligation. We're thankful that they are going to do this. Um, will, will I, you know, immediately switch to only using superchargers? No. Because uh, we charge at home mostly. Mostly we charge at home. Yeah. And when we're on a road trip, it's like, I'm Whatever. cheap. I'll go for the cheap one. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, there's a lot of myths about the reliability of EA it was just on Twitter and somebody's like, e EA sessions are never that smooth. And I'm like, well, we, we got a, quite a few on this channel that shows how smooth uh, the, the charging sessions can be. We got a lot of miles exclusively almost using the EA network, a couple of EVgo network stations in there. But it, it can work, it can work well. And um, you know, circling back around to this announcement, there has to be some pressure on the current networks to improve. And I think this will um, definitely push that. And uh, it's also gonna be a challenge for Tesla that once they start opening up to you know, multiple models from multiple manufacturers, will they have any issues with uh, compatibility? Because there's a lot of communication going on between the vehicle and the charger, and they're not all 100% in compliance or whatever. So like, are there gonna be issues with uh, the charging? We mentioned it in our last video, the Hyundai Motor Group, um, Lucid's, all the 800 volt systems, they're a little bit quirky in how they, they charge. So they are very much capped in the speeds that they can use at a Tesla supercharger with the Super Dock um, or Magic, Magic Dock. Dock. And Super Doc would be a good name, actually. <laughs> yeah, but uh, they'll probably still have the same issues unless they resolve that. And it's, you know, Kyle Connor has a great video explaining all the details, but it's, it's the way that they sort of um, manage that 800 volt system. They're, they're basically getting around some things and it doesn't matter on a Electrify America station, but it does when you're using a supercharger. So. Manufacturers are going to have some challenges. Tesla is going to have challenges making it work with all of these quirky manufacturing uh, manufacturer uh, protocols that should be standard but are not. And uh, we'll see. And now they've committed, which is thrilling. And we have access to so many more vehicles that have access to so many more chargers. So you can have uh, what has been the cheapest EV on the market, so the Bolt and then have access to the Tesla supercharger network. Yeah. It's absolutely awesome. It does change the whole game now, and I'm going to be keeping a whole eye out on the Equinox reservations again yeah. for whenever those open because of this, because this would just be an incredible thing to, to see happen and to test and experience. So, so we, we had some questions for you guys last time. I'd like to leave some more questions if you stuck around this long. Uh, but how does this make you feel about, you know, Chevy and GM and Ford and, you know, all of those, like, does it make those vehicles more desirable because now you have access to, you know, double the number of charging stations? Um, I've had a lot of comments over the past two years. like, I like the Mach-E, but there's no way I want to be reliant on non superchargers. So for those type of people, does this change it at all for you? And, uh, of course, you know, we've asked ourselves and we talked about it, but who do you think is next and why? Like, why do you think it might be whoever you suggest? I hope it's Geely or Volvo because I really am excited about the EX30. So, but I think, I think it'll be Hyundai and Hyundai yeah. Motor Group, which would be great. That'd be awesome. Yeah. And, and I did a little bit of a poll because I was like, who, who of the big legacy manufacturers will it be? Because I think Rivian and Lucid, I, I, I mean, basically, um, it's just a matter of time. They, they, I think those people have to go along with the, the NAC standard. So um, who what, else could it be? What I don't do know. they do about the Adventure Network then? The Rivian Adventure Network, well, see, so that's, that's sort of the thing is, is like they're still in the infancy of rolling that out. True. So it should be fairly easy for them to switch over. 
Um, and a lot of times, you know, it's swap out the cable, swap out the little holster that it's, you know, plugged into and you're good to go. Of course, you don't want to leave your old Rivian, you know, CCS vehicles, you know, to, to just, you know, scramble for whatever they can do. But if there's an adapter, you can go and handle it however you want. So yeah, you'll have to let us know who you hope is next. Uh, and also, what's your favorite color? Because since we're asking questions, I, yeah, I don't have a favorite Yeah, we got some interesting color. colors here. So <laughs> Yeah, we do. Here. On that note, right? Yeah, I think we can wrap it up. We've been uh, trying to just sort of cover our thoughts. Uh, yeah. Pretend this is like a podcast and we were just, you know, sitting in an office with a big microphone and headphones on and talking about it. But this is, this is our equivalent version of a podcast. Mm -hmm. Last time we were at Disneyland, uh, this time I'm wearing a Walt Disney World t-shirt. And hopefully we sound better. Yes. That was crazy. So uh, <laughs> if, you, if you haven't checked that one out, it was, it was a lot of fun. <clears throat> Excuse me. So... Thank you very much for watching this video in which we touch base on the exciting news about GM joining the NACS standard protocol. I'm saying NACS. NAX. NAC. I'm NACS. What do you say? Leave there that down below. There should be a rap song about it. Yo, <laughs> no. Uh, CCS <laughs> is too hard to say. I'm going with NAX because it's Every the day. way. Every day. Okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you for watching. <laughs> Thank you to our patrons who name us scrolling, scrolling across the screen right now. I can't talk because you're so nerdy. Thank you guys so much. And just remember that whatever you drive, whether it's a Ford, a GM, a Tesla, whatever. You're supposed to say whether it's CCS, Chatamo, or NACS. Next. Bye. Enjoy the ride. Bye. <laughs>